To get started painting in Seracolors, all you need is paint and water. It handles basically like watercolors or gouache. But for near endless possibilities in texture, transparency, viscosity, and sheen, take a look at the wide world of medium. Think of Seracolor mediums like paint without the pigment. They're made of the same waxy stuff and can be added to any color in any quantity. First of all, all mediums can be used to extend paint. Since mediums have no pigment, they're less expensive by volume. So if you're using one of the more expensive pigments, you can use mediums to get the volume you need while using less paint. And unlike the fillers used in student grade paint, mediums are made of the same stuff as Seracolor, so there's no loss in quality. This is gel medium here, more about that later. There are currently five different mediums available for Seracolors. The first is fluid medium. It's very thin, so I normally put it in a separate container rather than mix directly with the paint like I'm doing here. I use fluid medium all the time instead of water to make the paint flow and to increase transparency. It tends to level out, leaving few visible brush strokes. Compared to water, you can see how crisp and clean the medium is, where the water tends to bleed. Next is gel medium, heavy body. It's much thicker than fluid medium. You can pour it out or use a palette knife. Use it to make the paint flow and increase transparency, and also to increase gloss. When mixed with paint, it retains a heavy body, but you won't get any crisp peaks with this medium. It can be used for glazing thin layers or building up into thicker layers. Unlike the fluid medium, which levels out, gel medium retains brush strokes. Next is molding paste. It's very waxy and useful for bulking up your paint. Build up big, heavy impostos with a brush or palette knife. You can add a lot of medium before the paint begins to get slightly lighter in appearance. Check out those stalagmites. Molding paste is thick and sculptural, and every mark will dry just as you made it. A quick note, whenever using supplies out of a jar or a can, it's best to take an even layer off the top rather than stab into the middle, which can let in oxygen and dry out the whole container. I learned this the hard way with printmaking ink. Don't gouge your mediums. Next is light molding paste, which is much fluffier than the heavy paste. There's a toothy grittiness due to the presence of ceramic microspheres. It mixes with paint easily and has a really workable consistency. This might be my favorite medium. The marks you can make are comparable to the heavy molding paste, but the heavy paste appears more waxy and the light paste more grainy. Next is fiber paste. Also great for adding body and texture, this medium is the grittiest of all. It dries to a matte paper mache like texture and I find it useful for making a colored ground layer, the first layer of a painting. It's similar to the light molding paste and texture, but much heavier and grittier. Finally, I'll mention the retarder additive, which is not a medium, but can be used with any paint medium combination to slow drying time. Add a few drops to your pile and you won't have to worry about it drying out while working. So here they all are dried and stacked up for comparison. Remember, you can combine all the different mediums interchangeably. So, for example, if you like the handling properties of the paste mediums, but don't want a matte finish, just brush on a layer of gel medium over the top. And if you want to bring it to a really high gloss finish, polish the dry layer with a microfiber cloth. If you only have one medium in your kit, I recommend the fluid medium. Use it always instead of water, and you're going to have a good time. From there, you can experiment with all the other mediums and get your Sarah colors dialed in to exactly the look and feel that you like.